Good morning. We welcome you to worship this morning and pray God's blessing upon us as we worship the Lord this Sunday. My name is John Gregory. I'm so pleased to serve here as pastor at First UMC and help lead and worship along with our choir and Pam and Cindy and our media crew up in the balcony this morning. As you begin our service, if you haven't already done it, please fill out our connect card, our green insert in your bulletin. Uh, fill that out and put that in the offering plate a little later in the service when the offering comes by. I'd like to try just briefly highlight a couple announcements. First, would you read the announcements on the back page of your bulletin? I want to highlight a couple. Uh, this evening we kick off something uh, new, both for Diane and I, and I think possibly for you, at least for a while. We're going to have, uh, if you've got a birthday in September, we're having a gathering at the Parsonage, just a social gathering with Diane and I. Uh, it starts at 6.30 tonight. Uh, please eat at home or else you'll be fasting mainly because we're not serving dinner, but we'll have a piece of cake for you. We'll have dessert uh, and come join us for that. I realized, hopefully most of you know where the Parsonage is, but some of you may not. So, and I didn't get that printed bulletin, I'm sorry. It's at 1303 Lurlin. Did I say that right? Lurlin accent on the first syllable or so. I, I was saying that wrong earlier in my time here. 1303 Lurlin uh, Road. Uh, come join us if you can at 6.30. The details are in the bulletin there. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to joining. We, we're, I think we're up to eight, eight-ish or so. We've got a good crowd coming of RSVPs. I hope you can join us. If you have an RSVP and you're here today and can make it, uh, let me know if you got it time at the end of worship and let me keep moving here on a totally different note we're looking for some second adults to be second adults to work with Tricia Starnes in our children's ministry we could really use a second adult in our 10 a.m. Sunday school hour that goes uh, the same time as our 10 a.m. contemporary service we could also use a second adult right now at our 11 o'clock worship time here of our traditional service with the choir uh, and we could also use a second adult to work with Tricia at Pam's 10 a.m. Tuesday morning Bible study. Uh, any of these time slots could be one very dedicated individual but I also want you to know if you can't do that every week but you could do that once a month we could do that with a rotation of persons so if you would be interested in either learning more or helping out in our children's ministry in any of these areas either contact me myself Pastor John or Tricia Starnes our children's ministry coordinator I appreciate that and with that I think I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Roseanne do you have a uh, we have a, a capital campaign announcement before the choir sings for us. Good morning, and I am Roseanne Stannard, the chair of the capital campaign for the church. We have some exciting news. You may have noticed that the singles are in the uh, parking lot next door. They will begin the work to repair the roof this week. So we're very excited about that. We'll go into the winter season well prepared. Um, the work should be completed within a month or so, and maybe sooner than that. We'll see, but um, I wanted to celebrate that. And then I also want to let you know that the early um, work that our campaign, campaign has done is going very, very well. We are on track to achieve our goals. And I want to thank Amy Cardina for putting a chart up, which is in the um, CLC lobby that shows what our progress is so far. So we're doing quite well. Um, the early donations have already started coming in, so I appreciate everyone who's donated, and we thank you so much for that. And for those of you who have not made uh, a decision about what you want to do, we have some small groups that we'll be meeting, and I wanted to share that. It will be in the newsletter. It will also be in your bulletin in the coming weeks. There will be f um, five meetings, four here at the church. One, uh, John and I are hosting at our house. The first one is Saturday, September 23rd at 1.30 in the church library. That will be hosted by Ben Till, Dr. Ben Till. On Sunday, September 24th at 3 p.m. in the church library, Kirby Turner, Dr. Turner, will be hosting that one. On October 3rd at 3 p.m. in the library, Faye Biggs will be hosting one. That's on a Tuesday. On Wednesday, after the um, dinner, on October 11th, there will be one at 6 o'clock again in the library hosted by Gail Tinsley. And then the last one will be hosted on October 17th at 7 p.m. at our home at 1310 Barron Road. Again, this will be in the newsletter. You'll have more chances to sign up. Um, there will be sign-up sheets for you if you haven't uh, signed up. And those of you who have, I think I've reached out and talked to each of you. And so we have your times. If you haven't and if you have questions, if you feel like you need more information, if you want to explore alternative uh, methods of donating. We're happy to give that information, and that's what these meetings are for.
So thank you for that. So prayerfully consider how you will support this effort. And thank you again for uh, a wonderful start. We are on track to reach our goals. And thank you. It's all up to you. And it's due to you that we are doing so well. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sandy Price. I am not Sally Gregg. Although we do get mistaken for each other, it's because of our hair color. Um, anyway, I am filling in for Sally this morning and I am proud to be your liturgist. If you will please stand and let's greet each other for a few moments before we begin our rest of our worship service. Let us join together in the call to worship as printed in our bulletin. Beside the lake shore, long ago, Jesus called to his disciples, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Jesus still calls us today. Let us continue the ministry begun by the Sea of Galilee today when we proclaim the good news of God's love as we follow Jesus. Amen. There's a lot of furniture up here this morning. Uh, it's a great thing to be back in our choir robes and that means it's the official fall season and uh, I just want to take this opportunity to invite any of you to join choir. Yes, you too can join this choir. We would love to have you. You don't even have to read music. It helps, but it's not. We don't. Someone even asked me, uh, where do I go to audition for the choir? And I just said, what? No auditions, just come on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock. We have a good time. I love this first hymn we're doing because when Jesus called those fishermen to follow him, that he would make them fishers of men, they were rough fishermen that did not know God the way, you know, they didn't know who Jesus was, but they knew something was different. And they dropped their nets and followed him just followed him. And that's what our first hymn's about. Drop what you have that is binding you up and follow Jesus. Let's sing verses one, two, and four of Where He Leads Me. <laughs>
please remain standing. This morning, as you've looked in your hymnal to prepare for the affirmation of faith, we are on page 883. It says the statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. There is not a mistake. This is one of Pastor John's favorite affirmations. So um, we are excited to be joining in this. Let us say what we believe. We are not alone in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Before we pray, one additional prayer concern that came uh, to us at the early service. I'd ask you to pray for uh, Laura Thurman, uh, Jackson Jett's uh, fiance, who's home sick today, was unable to worship with us. So uh, we'd uh, covet your prayers for her, uh, for her healing and recovery. And as I say that, I also would be remiss if I didn't lift up, lift up Cynthia Gonzalez, our office manager, our finance person, who has also been homesick for this past few days, unable to help lead in worship as she normally does at uh, 10 a.m. worship. Uh, her husband Chris told us uh, an hour ago that she is uh, getting better on the men, but we covet your prayers also for her recovery and that she'll be back uh, in the office uh, with us soon. And friends, with that, would you uh, bow with me and be in an attitude of prayer as we might pray together? Lord God, we give you thanks for your love for us. We give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the return of the official choir season and the beauty of the music, their music of this service. God, I pray you'd help us to hear your son's call, the Lord's call anew this day. May it speak to us anew this very Sunday. Lord, help us to follow you. Help us to commit ourselves to be your disciples anew. And Lord, as I pray that prayer, I think about things that disciples do, which includes loving others and praying for others. So, Lord, continue this time to pray for others in this time of morning prayer. I pray for persons on our prayer list to lift up persons that are in the, serving the military. They're printing our bulletin. And also, especially lift up Laura and Cynthia to you. 
And Lord, I invite your people to lift up to you uh, silently in their hearts and minds other persons in need and situations in need this morning. And oh God, I pray your spirit be at work in all of these persons' lives and all of these needs. We pray your spirit, Lord, be at work for healing and wholeness, whether that be in the body, whether that be in the mind, whether that be in the realm of the spirit or in our relationships with others. And Lord, as we pray for individuals near and dear to us, we also pray for your world to lift up every nation on the face of the earth, including our own. Also, we lift up in concert with your people many places, many peoples, communities in the midst of brokenness and suffering. And therefore, I pray for your church. I pray for sisters and brothers in Christ here in the sanctuary at, at First UMC, to sisters and brothers across our community, our country, and your world. Strengthen us together in shared witness and service and advocacy that your kingdom would come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But, O oh God, as we lift up many needs, and as so many more needs are prayed by your people before you, Lord, we also pause to give thanks for so many blessings and joys, for the gift of life itself and your, the gifts of your creation, for our family and friends, for our community and nation, for the gift of our choir and their music, for the gift of our organist and our organists, our flautist, Lord, for all the gifts of music that you have given this church. And Lord, simply for the gift of music, capital M, and the way it speaks to us and communicates to our hearts as well as our minds and spirits. For all the individual particular blessings and gifts you've given each one of us and Above all, O oh God, for your greatest gift, our Lord Jesus Christ, I give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name and pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time I would invite the uh, ushers to come forward as we take part in the giving and receiving of our tithes and offerings.
Oh God, bless these gifts and the givers of these gifts. That they all might be used to the work of your church and the coming of your kingdom in glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Matthew 4, verses 18 through 22. It's found on page 1500 in your pew Bible. And as Pam mentioned earlier, uh, there are biblical scholars that feel that the disciples, or those that were come to be disciples, already knew Jesus. And so as he comes to them and says, come on, let's go, they are more than willing to go with him, as we'll hear in the scripture. Also think about how they left everything, all their livelihood, to follow this man. Here's the scripture from Matthew 4. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. pray with me before the message this morning. Lord, speak through me. When he be speak in spite of me, speak in spite of the sin and contradictions in my life. But above all, O oh God, speak beyond me. Speak beyond my words and the words and wisdom of others to your word. Your living word for us in Jesus Christ, your word of life, your word of hope. And O oh God, speak to us today your message of the call of Jesus. The call of Jesus that still goes out to us today, goes out to everyone today, to follow me and to become my disciples. Help us to hear your call anew, O oh Lord, to follow you. Guide us in your way, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, when I think about the past three years, you know, the pandemic and the getting through the pandemic, when I try to think of just one word to sum it up, the word that comes to mind is crazy. We've been just through a massive time of change, not only in our country, but really in so many ways around the world. I mean, but you, at some points, uh, I, I get a little bit disoriented. A and I find that I, I need regularly in life to try to be able to find true north, the way a compass allows one to find true north in yourself geographically. A, a true meaningful sense of, of direction. I, I need true north and maybe you do too in the midst of the whirlwind that we live in today. And, and I find it interesting as, as I best understand life 2,000 years ago uh, around the Mediterranean basin, things were kind of similar. In, in many places their people's lives were also in uproar for a different reason because of the occupation of the Roman Empire, of their lands. People, I believe then, were looking for true north as well, probably just as people have been looking for true north in some way in every generation in human history. And then someone came along, probably in one sense out of the blue, and gave a life-changing invitation. I want you to hear that again. I think it's so important. I'm going to read it to you as Sandy already read it for us well. I'm reading here, there's some very slight variations from the New Revised Standard Version. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon who's called Peter, 
and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James son of Zebedee and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing the scripture. Jesus walked along this lake shore, just I'm sure many of you have done, whether it's Lake Wapapello or some other lake around here or lake around where you grew up. And he walks by two sets of common everyday workers, everyday working people just like you, not people who'd been like to graduate school, not people with a PhD or a master's degree in Judaism, not rabbis, but the common everyday people like you and me, he walked by those working people and said, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Jesus called them to be disciples. And I want to reflect on that call with you today. Now we might ask, what is a disciple? Probably too often in my life as a preacher, I've tried to give some fancy complicated definition that's probably not worth much. So I'm not going to do that today. I've learned a bit over the years. I think this passage gives us a three-part definition about discipleship. And so in the next three weeks starting today, I'm going to break down the three phrases, key phrases in this sentence invitation and reflect on them with you today and in the next couple Sundays. So let's listen to the first part today. Jesus says, follow me. That's the first part of discipleship. The basic part, right? Following Jesus. But how do we follow Jesus today in 2023 is a little simpler 2,000 years ago, right? To the media crew, I'm going to warn you, I'm going to walk here just a tiny bit across the, uh, the altar. You know, literally 2,000 years ago, Jesus came by Lakeshore and he basically said, folks, come with me. And he traveled somewhere else and it wasn't too complicated, right? Literally picked up your stuff, or more literally, as I think perhaps well, you set aside your work tools and followed him where he was going. And you did life together with him, as most would say, as read scripture, probably roughly, roughly for three years there. But how do we follow Jesus today in 2023 when he comes to us spiritually in his risen form, but not in human form? And following him doesn't mean packing up and necessarily going to a different place. So, well, you know, I'm a preacher, so let me tell you a story, try to illustrate that. I hope this will go well here. I hope some of you are dog people here. There was a, a man who had a really well-trained dog, really well-trained. Uh, and he kind of, few friends had gathered. And he wanted to kind of show his dog off to them. So, uh, he, you know, he gave co basic commands. He told the dog to sit. Dog sat immediately. He, the dog stood up and then he said, uh, pardon me for a terrible cliche dog name. I'm going to call the dog Rover, if that's all right. He said, Rover, roll over. Rover immediately rolled over two, three, four times, kind of showing off himself. And then he, you know, he said, Rover, spin around, or spin around two, three, four times. Every command the master gave, he followed it exactly. And then the owner said, now friends, check this out. See if you can get him to do what I've just got him to do. So one of his friends said, Rover, sit down. Rover didn't move. Somebody else said, Rover, roll over. Rover didn't move. He didn't even flinch. So somebody else said, Rover, you know, spin around. Rover didn't move at all. The, the owner, trying to curse, said, here, let me bring out some of Rover's treats. They brought out some food. And they knelt down and said, held first, said, Rover, come here. Dog didn't even move. And one of his friends said, you know, George, how do you explain that your dog is this well behaved? And, and George says, all I know is this. Rover's been trained just to listen to the voice of his master. And friends, that's probably the first step of discipleship today. To try to simply listen to the voice of the Lord. The voice of the master in our lives. 
Because that sounds simple, but if your life's anything like mine, it's not easy to do. If your life's anything like mine, there's a whole lot of noise in my life. There's a whole lot of noise. There's a whole lot of voices, sometimes a cacophony of voices. So how can we listen to the Lord's voice in 2023 with all the noise around us? Well, let me start off with a word of affirmation to you in just a moment. We use spiritual practices, sometimes called spiritual disciplines. We use spiritual practices that help us focus on the Lord's voice in the midst of all the voices we hear in the world around us. And one of them you are doing today, one of the fundamental spiritual practices I think you all know, Wesley talked about worshiping every Sunday unless you're prevented. And I want to celebrate all of you that took the time out of your lives today, your morning day. You could be down at the coffee shop or the, is it the donut hole? I got to get the local donut places down here. So you, you could be there right now instead of here. So I appreciate your commitment to the practice of worshiping regularly. But friends, is it enough in your life to just listen for one hour on Sunday? To hear the Lord seven days a week? Again, I don't know about you, but in my life, that doesn't work well. There's a whole bunch of noise. There's a whole bunch of voices in my life Monday through Saturday. As well as for that matter, if I'm honest with you, the rest of the hours on Sunday, besides the three hours I get blessed to spend with you helping lead worship here. So what do we do? We use spiritual practice. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, not just you guys, but the choir out there too. But, you know, that's why we read the Bible, right? We read the scripture to try to seek the Lord's voice during our week as well as on Sunday. It's why we pray, and I encourage you to pray. And when I say that... Not just to praise talking to the Lord, although that's of course one basic way we pray, but also to pray sometimes and then be quiet, to listen for God's voice, to listen for the thoughts that come to us when we're listening for God, when trying to reflect and seeking God's, the Lord's message for us. It's another key reason why we have things that our church offers regularly, why we have Bible study, why we have Sunday school, why we have small groups. That may be one of the best ways to kind of read the Bible together, to read a, a book about growing in the Lord together with fellow disciples here in the current time where you can talk about the struggles of being a disciple in 2023. That's part of how key ways we listen for the Lord's voice seven days a week. But of course, I think most of you know being a disciple is not just about listening. There's a little more to it than that. We listen to the Lord's voice so that we would try to do what he calls us to do. That he would act, we would act in the way that he calls us to act. And so listening to the Lord's voice leads to some more active spiritual practices. Sometimes it means advocating for God's kingdom of love here on earth as it is in heaven, in our community, our state, our country, our world. Sometimes it means doing stuff that I think so many of you do so well. It means serving others. Sometimes that's serving others within the walls of the church. Sometimes it's serving others beyond the walls of this great sanctuary and church building. Sometimes it means giving to the Lord, to the Lord's cause in giving to the church as Jesus gave of himself generously. Sometimes it means, and hopefully at all times, it means being a positive witness to others in our neighborhood, in our community, in our world as Jesus was a living witness for the good news of God. So, so friends, that's one aspect of what it means to be a disciple. It means to say yes, to follow Jesus. To engage in some spiritual practices, to listen to the Lord's voice. And then to respond actively in how Jesus calls us to respond by giving and loving and serving and witnessing and advocating for God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Now friends, it'd be nice if that was all it was to being a disciple. It'd be wonderful if there were no challenges to discipleship, if there were no barriers to discipleship. I could just go back to my chair and sit down. And if any of you have never experienced any barriers in your life, would you come talk to me after worship? I'd love to hear how to do that. 
So I want to talk about a couple barriers, a couple challenges. I'm not trying to say there's only two. I don't know how many. There are um, a lot of challenges, I think, in our lives. I'm going to name two today, at least that I, I since I've experienced. One of them is, I think, an attitude that can take various shapes. It might be you don't feel like you know enough about the Bible or you don't really know what it means enough to live a Christian life to consider yourself a disciple of Jesus, that, Lord, I'm going to be your disciple. It may be that you feel discipleship, that's just the thing of paid professionals. That's like Pam is, can be a disciple or Tricia or, 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 or Tim or, or Chris or Cynthia or Pastor John, people who are un ordained or people who are paid to be on a church staff or maybe, but discipleship's not just for average everyday people that work a job outside the church. You, you may feel unworthy to call yourself a disciple of Jesus. And if you've ever thought or felt any of these things, please look again at the gospel story and to listen to me as I share this next set of thoughts with you. Again, Jesus didn't walk by the seminary of his day to call people. He didn't go to some graduate school in ancient Galilee. In fact, one pastor pointed out to me, I was just so struck by this, that those fishermen were probably people that flunked out of the Bible reading prep schools that you would have been a part of to become a rabbi in Jesus' day. Most likely, and I'm not meaning this as a put down, but most likely those men and women around them and, and so many others were the religious rejects that didn't read or memorize the Bible well enough to make the cut to become a rabbi, a religious leader in Jesus' day in ancient Israel. And yet Jesus came into ordinary workplaces. Did you notice that? I think our other leaders mentioned that. He didn't come to people in their home. He went to people in their workplaces in the middle of their workday. Ordinary, everyday workers like you and said, follow me. Friends, if you don't hear anything else today, hear this. The call of Jesus is for everybody. The call to be a disciple is for everybody. Thank you for that nod, my brother, and that amen. It's for people like you. It's for people like me. It's for everybody in this sanctuary. It's for everybody in Poplar Bluff. It's for everybody in Berry County. It's for everybody in Missouri, the United States, and across the world. Now, don't get me wrong, friends. If you don't feel well qualified, friends, I can relate to that. Most days, I don't feel that either. If you don't feel worthy, I can relate to that too. It's not somehow we're worthy or well qualified. It's that Jesus calls all of us. And he says, not in these words, he says, I'll qualify you, I'll forgive you, just follow me and I will make you my disciples. He forgives us, he calls us, he qualifies us to join him on the journey of disciple, the journey of discipleship. Remember, the call of Jesus for everybody. I want to lift up one other obstacle, friends, before I, I get ready to close. And that is sometimes for me, following Jesus as the obstacle of being afraid of what Jesus might call me to do. And friends, I know that's real because I've struggled with that self many times in my life. I sense every human being has a comfort zone. John Gregory certainly has a comfort zone. And it seems like Jesus regularly calls his followers to step out of their comfort zones at times. To follow him. To serve him. To be a witness and an advocate for his kingdom. So I want to tell you this. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. I'm going to tell you a story about a time where the Lord helped me step out of my comfort zone. But before I tell it, please don't misunderstand. Your pastor, John Gregory, is not some disciple that 95% of the time always follows Jesus right out of his comfort zone. I won't give you a percentage of my own evaluation because I don't have the, the boldness to be that honest with you. It's probably definitely less than half the time, but on, on, on sometimes a good day. But what I want to say to you is that Jesus can help lead us out of our comfort zones. Let me, let me get going. Let me tell you a little story. Th three summers ago, after the death of George Floyd, which later, as you know, became adjudicated as the murder of George Floyd. I felt the Lord calling me to do something, to say something, to make some type of statement for racial justice in our country. 
and up hearing about a, a, a protest rally that was going on in St. Louis County where I was serving at that time, when I was serving at my past appointment. And I felt the Lord calling me to join that rally and to take part in that protest march. Now friends, that was outside of my comfort zone. I don't know if I was 57, 58 at that time. I had never taken part in a public protest, public rally in my life until that point. And yet I felt Jesus calling me to do something to advocate for justice in our country and in the community in which I lived. And so within the span of 24 hours, I went from learning about this protest rally to wrestling with, should I go to this, with resisting it, saying, no, I'm not sure I'm quite ready to step outside my comfort zone that much, and then finally deciding to go. Because I took part in that. It was an amazing spiritual experience. I don't have time to talk about it in detail today. Maybe I do that some other Sunday or some other gathering. But what I want to say is this. I believe when the Lord calls us to step, step outside of our comfort zones, He'll send guides to us. He'll prompt us with thoughts of who can we talk to that will help us. I called a good friend, also a fellow clergy person, was a part of the church I was serving. And I talked to Susan, and Susan's guidance was very helpful. She wasn't able to go to that rally. She'd been in other ones. But she gave me some very helpful guys. She also said an a, a acquaintance of mine, a good friend of hers, another clergy person would be at the rally and I might want to seek him out and he would give me some other coaching about how to, how to participate. That was tremendously helpful. It helped me to step, to take a step forward in faith with the Lord that I couldn't have done without those fellow disciples giving me some guidance and some encouragement. And that's what I want to testify to do today, friends. Your comfort zone is different than mine. But when the Lord calls us to step outside our comfort zones, I believe the Lord will give us promptings, will give us thoughts of someone to call, a fellow, someone from your small group, someone from your Bible study, someone that you sit with in the pew here in church, or someone from another church that you're good friends with, a fellow disciple that you can talk about, boy, I'm wrestling with this, and they'll help you sort it out in Jesus' name. I trust that happens when we seek to follow Jesus Christ. Friends, I want you to hear the call of Jesus one last time, and then I'll wrap up here. Jesus says to us today, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. I invite you to respond to the call of Jesus today. Friends, I know the large majority of you here, you've already done that in your lives, and I want to celebrate that. But I don't want to just leave you there. I'm going to say something. I said something kind of like this maybe a couple weeks ago. Let me say it clear today. To all of you that already are striving to be disciples of Jesus, I want you to take the next concrete step in your life to follow him. That could be any number of things. For some of you, that might be choosing what spiritual practice you'll use later today or tomorrow or on Wednesday to try to seek the Lord's voice through this week. That could be, for some of you, could be praying, Lord, are you calling me to take up a new spiritual practice that I haven't been doing to better listen for your voice? I'm doing this one, these two, these three. Are you calling me to take up another one? For others, it's probably totally different. Some others, Jesus may be calling you to serve in a new way that you've not been serving. He may be calling you to take a step forward in service. For others still, it may be to give in a new way beyond what you're giving currently in the name of Jesus Christ. For others still, maybe for all of us, it's an act of witness. I don't want to get ahead of myself in a couple of weeks, but it could be like, how do, Lord, how do you want me to go fishing for people this week? And if I could make that more concrete, I hope that doesn't sound as scary as it sounds. I don't think, again, I don't, I don't respect if you've ever handed out a track. I'm not trying to say it's all bad. But the best way I've been taught lately to fish for people is not handing some, by some handout about Jesus. But it's about seeing somebody may just be an acquaintance with you or somebody may be a stranger. Thank you for that. And making a connection with them. How could I try to build a relationship with this person I don't hardly know that might turn into be a friend of mine? And then through that friendship, through that relationship where they would give me a listening ear, I might be able to invite them to First UMC. Or I might be able to invite them to my small group or to my Bible study. 
where they can more deeper in their own life seek out the Lord. Friends, I don't know what it is because I'm not you. But if you'll ask the Lord, he will guide you into your concrete next step in following him. Friends, I want to say one final thing today. I've got to shift gears. And, and for all, all of you who are people of prayer, just say a little eyes open prayer for me here. Sometimes I'm not the best at this. I often preach to those who are already disciples. But I need to say something else. There may be some people here today that have never committed their lives to be a follower of Jesus Christ. There may be some here that know about him but have not given their lives to him or to follow him. So I would invite you to say yes to Jesus today. I invite you to say, yes, Lord. I will follow you. Lord, please forgive me. And if you'll help me, I'll follow you as best I can. I know I'm going to fall short, but Lord, help me. I'll follow you today. Empower me to live in your way, Lord. And I'll follow you. So friends, I'd say, let's say yes to Jesus today. In Jesus' name. For just a moment, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray a, a brief prayer. If you feel inspired to kind of pray it with me uh, silently or under your breath, I invite you to do that. Would you pray with me? Yes, Lord, I will follow you. Lord, guide me into the practices that will help me listen to your message. Guide me into what you would have me to say and do as your disciple. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor, I once heard a sermon that said, Jesus will never lead you where he cannot keep you. So you follow that call. I promise you, Jesus will help you make a way and keep you there and bless you for being obedient. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn, I am thine, O Lord, verses 1, 2, and 4. often find it harder to do better than our hymnal and our hymns for a benediction. So if you will allow me to borrow from it again, I would say let us say yes to Jesus, to following him. 
and draw me nearer, nearer, Lord, to your precious bleeding side, to the cross where thou hast died. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the closing benediction, here I am, Lord. <laughs>